as I was growing, a lot of friends I used to hang out with, like you said, high performance people don't hang out. I, I can like none of the friends I have today are the friends I had before because they just don't get it or they were not comfortable being around me. And we, we have nothing in common, right? Uh, and like I said, it's, it's like, are we saying that you need to get new friends? Yes, we are saying that you, you need to get new friends. It's very, very true. Okay, another way of looking at it, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Elon Musk do not go to the, oh, Steve's gone, do not go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. They do not go to the World Cup. Yeah. They do not go to the World Series. Yeah. You do not see them at the NC2A uh, basketball championship. They don't go. Mm. They don't hang. Mm. They don't chill. Yes. Zero. Warren Buffett does not hang or chill. <laughs> True. Oh, well, we were in Verona, Italy, uh, uh, taking the Orient Express, Sally and I, last year. And we uh, climbed up to some Roman uh, ruins that had a, a bar and a restaurant. Mm. 45, 50 minutes later, mm. we still uh, are sitting there. And, and so Sally says, I think now you know you, you've chilled for the first time in your life. And I go, why? We've waited 45 minutes to order a drink. <laughs> is that what chilling is? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and are we the only ones complaining? You know, and so Sally in restaurants, she complains. Yes. Okay, uh, my husband's tired of waiting. And so I've chilled once in the last 10, 15 years, yes. waiting for a glass of wine in Verona, Italy on a, <laughs> on, on a uh, mountaintop. They don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. They, work. they work. They work on New Year's Eve. They work on uh, Christmas Day. They, the, um, they just work. But it's not work to them. It's, it's not, not work to us. It's, it's our enjoyment. Yeah. It's our enjoyment. And, uh, the, uh, and, it's and, not even uh, passion. It's almost like an obsession. Correct. I, I don't think passion is a strong enough word. Yeah. Because you are thinking about what you do all the time. 24-7. It's 24-7, right? I have now my, my gray hair right, from here, just from thinking about things, right? I went to bed last night at 10.30. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm mm. on a different time zone. And then I woke up at uh, 3.45 mm. to write down some, because I was thinking about this interview, mm. write something down on a piece of paper. Mm. I sleep with a pad next mm. to me. Uh, and then I, uh, I wanted to make sure I covered. Uh, and the... Uh, but I'm always thinking about it. It's like the seminar, which I could give in, in a coma dead. Uh, the, uh, I practice at least one hour for every hour. So if the seminar is 60 hours, I practice at least one hour. Mm. I go through all the 2,000 slides. I go through all the templates. I go through all the processes, procedures, and system. Mm. Every single one of them, even though I can probably... Do a half sleep. You can yeah, I could. It. I, you know, it, it, it's, sure. it, and I do it over and over and over. Mm. The, the trick is when we make a change, because we make changes every seminar, mm. because it's the best, the best practices. One of the kids out there may have figured out a way to get a slightly better rate of return, and we make that change. Mm. So other than those four or five changes we made uh, uh, in the last couple of seminars, those are the ones I have to relearn. Mm. But other than that, I mean, I, I, I have memorized 2,000 slides. Mm. I know which slide's coming up next, you know? And occasionally when I answer a question, mm. I'll get off track, I'll get ahead of my, oh, I'm four slides ahead now, mm. you know? And, and four slides later and it, it'll come up. Um, but one of the biggest challenges the kids have today, the snowflakes, as we were des describing them right. earlier, is work-life balance. There is no work-life balance, there's, there's no work okay? Life balance. Uh, Jack Welch said it much better than I do. He says there's work-life choices and they have consequences. Mm. There's work-life choices and they have consequences. And, but there is no balance for sure, you know. The most epic event of this century, the Oscar for high ticket closers. Closers in black, 2019. The $50 billion man, Dan Penny, the king of high ticket sales, Dan Locke. Get your ticket today. And the, um, I remember being, uh, going to uh, some important games of my two boys, Little League, okay? I remember going to uh, a auction. Uh, I, my daughter was little, she was at, went to some debutante ball and the auctioneer got sick and I 
filled in as the auctioneer, the auction stuff that, you know, stuff that costs 50 bucks for 500 bucks. I mean, you do that kind of stupid thing at, uh, for charity events. But I mean, I missed a lot of events. I missed a lot of events. I still haven't met my new grandson, uh, which we're going to meet the next trip we come to the, mm, uh, nice. to the West Coast. So we have, uh, now he is wearing t-shirts that say superhero, future superhero, mm. future. He's going to wear those until he's too embarrassed to wear them to school. Mm. Because we're, that kid is going to be fucking programmed mm. like a, a robot. I mean, QLA. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, he's got his dad, who I trained, yeah. and he's got me. Yeah. So there's no fucking way that, that kid, you know, when, when your parents told most of the kids that watch this, mm. you can be anything you want. That's a lie. They're just telling you that. You can't. If your name's Kent in America, if your name's Kennedy, if your name is Clinton, if your name is Rockefeller, you can be, and you go to the right schools that your relatives went to, mm. your ancestors, you can be anything you want. Mm. In Britain, if you went to Oxford, Cambridge, you can be anything you want. But for Joe Schlupp, whose dad's an auto mechanic in Cleveland, Ohio, to tell his kid, you can be whatever you want, it, that's a fucking lie. Mm. You can't. Now, nobody was telling me that when I was growing up. Mm. And my, my dad only had one goal for me, to keep me alive till I reached the age of reason. Because mm. you were getting into so much trouble and shit. The last time I was arrested was February the 10th, 1977. Mm. If you want to do the math, I was 31 and a half years old. The last time I was arrested, assault with a deadly weapon on a policeman. So how mature was I at 31 and a half? Already had roles, already had matching Mercedes, mm. already lived in a Frank Lloyd Wright type house, mm. rich by most standards. I mm. was still a fucking maniac. Mm. So ostensibly that was the thing that was the last push towards maturity. Mm. Some people say I'm still not mature. <laughs> Some people say no, I think I think you've got the, I don't even remember back um, a few years ago when you came to uh, Vancouver, that when we met um, at the Fairmount Hotel. Correct. Uh, and just my wife and I, we met, um, I think before we even were married yet, we were still dating. Correct. Right? Correct. Uh, and I met you at the hotel lobby. And, and I and said, I said, good. <laughs> and I said, this, this, this one is a keeper. A uh, keeper, yes. Yes, thank you. And, and I think our relationship, me with Jenny, very much, she is my business partner, my, my best friend. Uh, I think that's great because I need a partner that's like Jenny, who understands what I do. It's part of, because if she's not part of my business, I think it will be very, very difficult. Just like Sally. Almost it's, impossible. You're right. Uh, like for high performance people, what do you say to you? They, they say the spouse is not supportive. Okay. All right? Before I answer that question, yeah. I was here for a wedding. I was staying at that place. And um, we rented a plane. It was on some little island out oh, there. Yeah. We were the only, Sally and I were the only two that showed up in a private plane. Yeah. I guess you, there's a ferry you can take. Yes. Okay? Yes. And, uh, the, uh, and so we, we flew in. And we, whatever the, the biggest room or cottage or whatever we stayed in. Mm. And so uh, we were separated and I'm like, everybody be over there having a drink and Sally and I'd be sitting here by ourselves. They're the ones that flew in on the plane. Now, getting back to whether your, your spouse is supportive or not, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but there's almost no way of it making it. I agree. I mean, you're just, you're living in a dream world. You're delusional. Again, what are you smoking? If it's not addictive, give me some. Because I want to be able to hallucinate like that. It just isn't. It's not possible. Uh, the best uh, scenario, which you uh, mm. just described, is when they're part of it, they're supportive of it, and they, they understand uh, and they've lived through the growth cycles. Because all the cycles aren't going to be up. Mm. Some of them are going to be down. We've gone through some, some tough times together. Yeah. Correct. And, and the more scar tissue you, you build together, mm. the better off you're going to be. Mm. Um, but most kids get married for the wrong reasons. Most kids have kids for the wrong reasons. I can prove to you statistically, beyond a shadow of a doubt, mm. everybody listening to this, at least 50% of you are accident, by accident. Mm. And not because they're six years apart, three years, or nine years apart. Mm. Okay. From the second trimester in your mom's tummy, it's been proven medically now, the baby can hear 
conversations. So your biological father comes home, whether you're married or not, biological father comes home, and your well, it's, 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 it's your mother's your mother because you, you know where you came from, mm. and your mother tells your biological father, "We're pregnant." That's a whole other subject about we're pregnant. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna have a baby, and the father yells, "What are you, stupid bitch? They just repossessed the fucking car. We're three months behind on our payments for the house." Mm. You heard that. Mm. Go and ask your father. Not your mom. Go ask your father if you were on purpose. And he doesn't even have to say a word. Look him, look him right into his eyes. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, the answer is no. For at least half of you. So if you start out life like that, and then the kids think, well, no wonder my dad never treated me this way. Most of the kids have, many of the kids, not most, many of the kids have daddy issues. Either they didn't have a daddy, mm -hmm which is the biggest of all issues, yeah. or the dad treated you like dog shit, mm. or the dad treated your brother, sister, the siblings better than but, you. Mm. Well, maybe because you were, you know, you kept him from finishing medical school. You kept him from fi finishing his master's degree. Pursuing his dream. Correct. Mm -hmm. And they will forever teach, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, not teach you, but uh, treat you that way. And uh, the, um, it's, but getting back to the original question, mm. If your partner's not supportive, it's just, it's, it's not impossible, nothing's impossible, but it's almost impossible.